Where did Earth get its water? An intriguing question, isn't it? For the longest time, we've been asking ourselves this very question, probing deep into our planet's past, seeking answers in its very core. The significance of this question is immense. After all, water is the lifeblood of our planet, the very essence that sustains all life forms that we know of. Without water, Earth as we know it would cease to exist. Traditionally, we've always looked at comets as the most likely source of our planet's water. These icy celestial bodies, hurtling through space, crashing into our planet billions of years ago, could have provided the water needed to kickstart life. It's a theory that has stood the test of time, a theory we've accepted and built upon. But every now and then, science throws a curveball, challenging our long-held beliefs, urging us to question, to rethink. And so, a new theory has emerged, one that shakes the foundations of our understanding about the origins of Earth's water. This new theory suggests that Earth's water did not come riding on icy comets, but was already present right here, in the space environment that our planet was born in. This theory is based on the idea that tiny dust particles in the protoplanetary disk surrounding the infant sun were quickly sucked up by forming planets, including Earth, thereby supplying them with water. A fascinating idea, isn't it? It turns our gaze away from Earth and towards the vast expanse of space. It redefines our understanding of our planet's origins and its relationship with the cosmos. But what if we've been looking in the wrong direction all along? What if the answer lies not on Earth but in space? Enter the space is water theory, a theory that has the potential to flip our understanding of our planet's water origin. Let's take a moment to dive into the depths of this fascinating theory. The space is water theory proposes a radical idea that the water we have on Earth was not delivered by icy comets, as previously thought, but was present on the planet from its very inception in the cosmic environment. The theory suggests that during the early stages of our solar system, there existed a protoplanetary disk, a ring of dust particles encircling the infant sun. Now imagine these tiny dust particles, each no larger than a pebble, swirling around in the cosmic dance. As the infant planets, including our own Earth, began to form, they acted like cosmic hoovers, sucking up these dust particles from the protoplanetary disk. And here's the twist. These dust particles, according to the theory, were already saturated with water. So, in essence, as our planet was forming, it was not only accumulating mass, but also gathering the water that would later fill our oceans, rivers and lakes. It's a theory that paints a picture of the early solar system not as a dry and desolate place, but as a vast cosmic ocean where water was as ubiquitous as the dust particles themselves. But of course, this is just a theory, one of many trying to solve the riddle of our planet's water origin. It's a theory based on the analysis of silicon isotopes and the mechanisms and timescales of planet formation. And while it's a theory that has yet to be universally accepted, it's one that challenges our understanding and invites us to look at space and our own planet from a fresh perspective. So could our oceans and lakes simply be remnants of the space our planet was born in? The space's water theory certainly makes us ponder this possibility. Let's delve deeper into this theory, shall we? At its core, it suggests that the Earth was formed much faster than we initially thought, and it was not a lengthy, drawn-out process. Instead, think of it as a cosmic quick fix, with millimetre-sized pebbles accumulating in just a few million years. Now you may wonder, how does this relate to water on Earth? Well, the theory challenges the popular belief that icy comets delivered water to our planet. Instead, it implies that water was already present on Earth, courtesy of its space environment. A fascinating thought, isn't it? We're talking about the protoplanetary disk that surrounded the infant sun, a dense cloud of gas, dust and debris. This theory proposes that dust particles in this disk were quickly sucked up by the forming planets, including Earth, supplying them with water. But how can we possibly know this? Enter the silicon isotopes. These isotopes act as a sort of cosmic detective, allowing scientists to measure the mechanisms and timescales of planet formation. The variations in the ratios of these isotopes provide vital clues about the early stages of our planet's life. The researchers' findings led them to theorize that this process of water delivery might not be unique to Earth. In fact, other planets may also have abundant water, which opens up exciting possibilities for the existence of life beyond our own planet. So it seems that our water, the very essence of life, might be a cosmic gift. 
The space's water theory doesn't just reshape our understanding of Earth's water. It opens up a universe of possibilities. So, what does this mean for us and our understanding of the cosmos? Firstly, let's consider the implications for our search for life beyond Earth. If water, a vital ingredient for life as we understand it, is more common in the universe than we thought, then the chances of finding life elsewhere increase. This theory suggests that the formation of water-laden planets may not be an exception, but rather a rule in the universe. It's a tantalizing thought, isn't it? The idea that there may be other Earths, brimming with life, just waiting to be discovered. This theory could also have profound implications for the future of space exploration. If water is indeed abundant in the universe, then our quest for habitable planets becomes more hopeful. Imagine, one day, we might stumble upon a planet with conditions ripe for colonization. It's a scenario straight out of science fiction, but this theory brings it a step closer to reality. But it's not just about potential life or colonization. The theory also opens up new avenues for scientific research. It challenges the traditional understanding of planet formation and presents a new perspective to study. This could lead to breakthroughs in astrophysics, potentially reshaping our understanding of the universe. In essence, the space is water theory does more than offer an explanation for Earth's water. It asks us to rethink our place in the cosmos. It encourages us to dream bigger, to imagine a universe teeming with life, full of planets awaiting discovery. The universe, it seems, might be a lot more alive than we've ever imagined. The space is water theory, in all its audacity, nudges us towards this tantalizing possibility. It invites us to look up at the stars and wonder with renewed optimism what secrets they might hold. As with any theory, the space is water theory isn't without its skeptics. There's a universe of questions surrounding this concept, and rightfully so. After all, the cosmos is a realm of mystery and wonder, and every theory we propose is but an attempt to unravel its endless enigmas. Firstly, it's important to acknowledge that the space is water theory is highly speculative. It's a fringe idea, not widely accepted by mainstream science. The notion that our universe could be filled with a substance resembling water that allows for the propagation of light and gravity is fascinating, but there's currently no concrete evidence to support it. Secondly, critics question how this theory aligns with our current understanding of physics. If space is indeed like water, what does this mean for the laws of motion, thermodynamics or quantum mechanics? These are complex questions that require careful thought and rigorous investigation. Moreover, if we accept this theory, we'd need to explain the existence of this hypothetical space water. Where did it come from? How was it formed? And perhaps most importantly, how does it interact with other cosmic entities like stars, galaxies and black holes? In spite of these criticisms, this theory strikes a chord of intrigue. It challenges us to think differently about the universe and our place within it. While it may be speculative, it serves as a reminder that we should never stop questioning, never stop exploring. The space is water theory, like all scientific theories, is a stepping stone towards greater understanding. These theories are not absolute truths, but tools for exploration, sparking curiosity, and driving us to delve deeper into the mysteries of the cosmos. So, where did Earth get its water? The answer might just be out there, in the vast expanse of space.